this is Platinum is here with a very special episode. As you can see, we are joined by two guests today. They probably don't need an introduction because I'm sure you'll follow them already, but we're going to give them one anyways. Uh, everyone say hello to uh, Tran and Steven from Fernatic Perspective. Boys, how are y'all doing? Doing awesome. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Excited for this show. Very, very excited. Thank you guys for having us on. This is long overdue. Both my, my mats with their alliteration <laughs> names and, and, and my man T. Stiff. It's, it's a pleasure to be on camera with you guys. So what's good? I got, yeah. see, I got Madrid over here dying already. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I just, I just like the I just like the the nickname T Stiff. I like that. I've never called him that, but I'm gonna call him that now. I've had that for a while, actually. Believe it or not, I like that. We'll call you T Stiff now. Sweet, sweet. Well, cool guys. So today, uh, if you can't tell from the video title, we're doing a fantasy draft. So kind of like fantasy football, but we're doing it with the Texas Longhorn. Um, I guess roster from all time. You can pick whatever Longhorn player, and we're drafting it uh Myers and Madrid did a draft video what a little bit two years ago or so kind of at the beginning of their YouTube tenure it was kind of a fun video so we thought it'd be a cool idea to do it with uh all the historical players from the University of Texas past present um so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be determining in draft order and then drafting players as such uh so one quick announcement before we get into it and get it on with the action, please subscribe to both of our channels, <laughs> Fanatic Perspective and Texas Platinum. Uh, we surely would appreciate it. And let us know in the comments if, uh, if you're wanting more collaborations like this in the future or have any other ideas um, for fun off-season videos like this. All right, so I am going to share my screen here. And we are gonna determine a draft order. This is my favorite right, we, got, <laughs> we got a little wheel going on. Um, so let's see who our first draftee will be. This is big. Oh, man. This is... I've this been is this tough. nervous. Oh, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Attaboy, Madrid. Let's go! All right. So I'm going to enter it into our little board right here real quick. How do you feel, Madrid? You already know what's coming. He doesn't know. All right, who's next? Ooh, that was close. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> I mean, you kind of want last pick at this point. <laughs> yeah, because we are doing a snake round. So right. I'm curious. Middle is never a bad area either. No. I'm just going to say. No, you want them double picks. Fourth is kind of a sucky area. All right. Oh. I got the middle. Just as he says Trevor. that. It's all right. I prep for this. <laughs> <laughs> we got the board. We got the board intact. We're good. All right. I know Matt who's, wants that double pick. Yeah. Who's getting the double pick here? I need it. I got a plan. 50-50 shot. Oh, oh. okay. And got he. All right, Steven got the, 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 the double pick. Take it. And then Steven, whatever. We got you. All right, boys. You want to explain the rules like that? We're, we're only picking one. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Um, so as you all saw from our board earlier, um, we are picking how many players is it? Seven. Seven total players. We're doing a quarterback, a running back, one wide receiver, a flex, which can be running back, wide receiver, tight end, um, skill player on the offensive side of the ball. And then on the defensive side, we're not doing a full defense. We're doing defensive players. So we're going to do one D lineman, one linebacker, and one defensive back. So total of seven. You got four on the offensive side of the ball, three on the defensive and uh, it's up to you to pick the order that you want it in. Probably best to go with an offensive power, but because of how we're doing it with the defense, that'll make some compelling picks, I think, to kind of throw those in as well. Um, anything else I'm missing before we hop into the actual draft? 
No, I think we're ready to go. All we're right. Curious, I'm curious to see who's going to pick the first defensive player or like who that will be. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm interested in that too as well. Okay. Well, let's get the ball rolling. The Texas Longhorn football draft is now in session. With the number one pick, we got Matt Madrid. Matt, who is your number one pick? Vince Young. <laughs> Put him down. That was fast. Put him down. Wow. <laughs> Trying to win. This is What's like your reason? This is like the year that LeBron was being drafted. <laughs> so right, he, right? he couldn't even wait to get up on stage to say that. <laughs> Why be Why? Turn, turn the uh, card in. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, I I was for a second. I was like maybe Ricky because of the Heisman and then all that. Maybe Earl, but I was like, no, there's nothing more than a magical Vince Young. Uh, he he brings the juice. Uh, he brings that X factor that uh, that no other player, especially a quarterback, that no one could bring. So yeah, it's kind of obvious. All right, I like it. Second up, we got Tran. Tran, who are you picking? I am going with Derek Johnson. Okay. Wow. Wow. You know what? what? Wow. Uh, going through all my list, I was able to load out seven players for every single position mm-hmm. that could be that could be drafted except for linebacker. It's linebacker's tough. So yeah. I'm going to pick the best linebacker that uh, Texas has had. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's kind of a hot take, but, <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll take uh, wow. it. Wow. I mean, are you going to go no, Nobis? <laughs> this I is mean, like we'll see what I'm going with. Back, this back is before, like uh, when Charles Barkley picked Allen Iverson with the first pick yeah, in right? that, hey, that no, draft. I'm, 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 going with De- I'm going with my defensive guy. Okay, fair it's enough. It's not a bad idea, though, because there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of, like, a lot of offensive players, like, you could you could choose from. Like, absolutely. I almost kind of. filled out. <laughs> mm-hmm. I almost kind of wish fantasy drafts did that with defenses. Instead of one defense, he picked players and mm-hmm. did like by tackles, interceptions. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. Anyway, I, I've played in a league like that before. Actually, you can do that in ESPN. It's pretty no, sick. You have to really, really customize it, but yeah, you can definitely do it's it. Pretty sick. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Anyways, third pick in our draft. First pick, we got myself. Who am I gonna take? I'm taking Ricky. Man, yeah, it's a good pick. Good Ricky Williams, baby. It's always good to have a good skill position player drafted first overall. And this guy owns the stat charts. Um, yeah, basically has every running record there is. Always good to have a solid running back in your system. And uh, Ricky's as high up there as he can possibly come. So, Ricky Williams. I don't blame you. First, first Texas pick. player I ever fell in love with, Ricky Williams. <laughs> You want it. Congratulations. I'm excited to have him. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be, be great for the program. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Myers. Be a good one. <laughs> All right. Myers, you're up. Who are you taking? All right. So for my first pick, I will be taking Jordan Shipley. Wow. Sheesh. All right. So hear Perfect. me out. This is a PPR league in my mind. And- <laughs> <laughs> Just throw that out there. <laughs> Jordan Shipley has the most receptions in Texas history. I'm 99% sure. Yeah. Um, he owns 3,000 yards, 33 touchdowns, and he's also my dad's realtor. He uh, he sells some ranches. So follow Shipley Ranches on Instagram. But, he's got a free plug. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, Jordan Shipley for sure. One of my favorite Longhorns growing up. I watched all of his games as a kid back in 08, 09. So, yeah, Jordan Shipley. I love receivers uh, and fantasy. So I'm, t- I'm taking Shipley first. So uh, I, the the only rebuttal I have is if you're going points per reception, um, Roy Williams was only down by seven receptions over him, but had over <laughs> 700 yards more than him and three yeah. touchdowns more, and then also three rushing touchdowns more. Is that right. Tran's next pick? No. <laughs> Seems like a so, bad pick. Man. So, <laughs> no, I'm I, I, I think it's a good pick, though. I mean, Jordan Shipley, you can't go wrong with him. What yeah. would Jordan Shipley's numbers be if, had he actually stayed healthy? In his As I said, he only career. played like two fully healthy he seasons. He really though. only had like Air. two good years of health. Because if you think about when he came out of high school, he was a big-time recruit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we were waiting for a minute, kind of like some people were waiting on right now on our current team. And it worked out for him. And I think it was a perfect situation with another wide receiver who may or may not get taken. 
where he didn't have to carry the whole the whole load when yeah. Cole McCoy had finally developed. And then at the end, Jordan Shipley, we saw him getting his bag all the way through the national championship game. So um, it's, I mean, I'm curious to see. I mean, we Jordan can't Shipley's scoff on his like. stats. I mean, his stats are there. Oh, yeah, oh no, so. absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. All right, Steven, it's your turn. You got back-to-back picks because we're doing it snake style. Who are you taking? Um, I'm going to take Earl Campbell, and I just want to say I love you guys. I love the way <laughs> you guys just drafted because uh, <laughs> when I think – when I, I'll be very honest with you. When I see the horns, when I see Bebo, when I hear the University of Texas, even though he is not my era, the first person I think of is Earl Campbell. So for me to get a Heisman winning running back, with the fifth pick. So big. also we got to put some respect on Earl's name. He had to be a first round pick in this draft or else people going to fire us from YouTube. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I get Earl Campbell. I get the person, the other person whose name is on the field. I get um, the person with the statue and I get an iconic legend who, you know, ran through everybody. The Tyler Rose shout out to, to his son, Tyler Campbell, who I'm friends with. I, I am thrilled to end up with Earl Campbell with the fifth pick. Arguably, as much as I love Ricky, some people still say Earl Campbell is the greatest running back in Texas history and one of the greatest running backs in all of college football history. That's a brilliant pick. It's a lot That's of fun to watch. I have his jersey for that reason because it's just – he's Superman, you know. But who's your next pick, Steven? Second oh yeah, round. I'm on the board again. <laughs> yeah. Snakes, snake drafts. So next down with, with 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 my next pick or the sixth pick, sixth pick overall, first pick of the second round. However you want to do it, I'm gonna take Colt McCoy here. Oh, it's a good combo. Being, it's a great combo. Reason being is to me there is a drop off with the quarterbacks after Vincent Colt. They're if doing nice. resumes statistically what they accomplished. I'm getting a quarterback who was a, a two-time Heisman finalist, All-American, and played in the era where there was a lot of, you know, he played with Tim Tebow, who arguably has the greatest resume of any college quarterback. I don't think Tim Tebow's the greatest college quarterback, but resume-wise, he played against him, played against Sam Bradford, all these dudes. And even guys like Chase Daniel and Todd Reesing, who were in the conference at the time. And Colt, you know, set the, at the time, NCAA record for most wins until uh, Kellen Moore passed him, had the record for highest completion percentage, I believe, in a single season. Myers, you're talking about Jordan Shipley. Jordan Shipley isn't Jordan Shipley, in my opinion, without Cole McCoy. They, they, it's the, you know, they both kind of symbiotic. And, and, and Colt's story, as a, uh, a lower pick, pe- people remember the name Ryan Parallel, who was actually the five-star recruit flipped to LSU where, and we, we kind of had to settle for Colt McCoy and he had wow. to battle, you know, the late Jevin Sneed who came in as the big recruit as, as the big name and he defeats him and, and goes on his junior year. That's when he turned into a Texas legend. You know, he's, his name's in the ring of honor and retired Jersey, all that. So I'm getting the quarterback. There's a drop off after that. So y'all can fight over the rest. I'm happy <laughs> to end up with Colt and Earl back to back picks. Let's go. Let's go. We off to a good start over here. I like that. Damn, he just took the lead, honestly. He's bringing the juice. Myers, how are you going to follow that up? Man, Steven just kind of scared me out of my pick. I was I was leading towards the leading tackler in Texas football history. Oh, that's what I was but, Damn. Not, not, not. <laughs> yeah, he, he is right. There's a big drop-off after Colt and uh, Vince. But Sam Ellinger, numbers-wise, can compete with them for sure. I mean, especially Vince. So I'll take Sam Ellinger here. Um, this is a purely – Numbers pick. I mean, Sam, even mentioning Sam in the same breath as Vince and Colt, although we love Sam, seems kind of disrespectful to Vince and Colt because they won at the highest level here. So I'll take the safe pick, Sam. I'll get those rushing touchdowns, those passing yards, just the, like the insane production he had over a great career at Texas. And, um, yeah, I'm taking Sam Ellinger with my second-round pick. And nice. you know he's a fantasy god, too. Oh, yeah. I had him. Many, many years I had him in, in college football fantasy, and he always – he always got the job done for me. Can I make a quick point regarding Sam Ellinger? Because I, I think it's I think I agree with you in terms of statistically, 
the numbers are there and he has a lot of records just in the totality because he was, you know, freshman starter all the way through. Uh, the great Bill Simmons often talks about whether it's basketball, football, whatever. Was this the best version of this person's career? I believe that this is kind of the like what we saw from Sam ultimately was in the middle of what could have been. It wasn't the worst because the worst would have been him ended up like David Ash because yeah. we were kind of headed that direction with the injuries. If y'all remember the concussions and some of the things he was battling, but he also could have been like a cult in terms of the wins, but the coaching wasn't there. The team around him wasn't necessarily there. And he didn't have a program like, you know, the Kyler Murray's and the Baker Mayfield's had at, at Oklahoma with that system that they have. So what was this the best version of Sam Ellinger's career? I think he actually could have done more oh, in, in a different, you know, if we talk about Marvel, you know, timelines and stuff mm-hmm. with Dr. Strange, who knows? I would have loved to see him on like Ohio State. Imagine yeah, how good he could have been running that offense we definitely didn't like it uh, the most out of him for sure like absolutely yeah all right my turn for second round pick (sighs) we mentioned his name earlier and uh i was kind of debating but you know what i'm going with the skill player again i'm going roy williams uh roy was you know probably arguably well arguably the second best wide receiver there is out there For the University of Texas, he was a first round draft pick. I mean, yeah, definitely our last first round NFL draft pick at the wide receiver position. He was an absolute force. Um, He's definitely up there in terms of the touchdown receptions as well as yards. Um, Obviously had a very good career at the university. Um, Just an all out great player. Good to go with those skill guys when in doubt. So I'm taking Roy for my second round pick. Nice. I like that. He was on the Cowboys for a while too, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I barely remember him During when I was decline. like, I was like 10. Don't like, bring up Cowboys Roy Williams. <laughs> he always threw up the horns after a touchdown. Yep. There weren't very many. He of loves them, but... Texas. When he I think of Texas. Roy Williams, when I think of Roy Williams though, I think of the cotton ball against LSU. He tore those boys up. Mm-hmm. For did. those of you who are out there who don't remember too young, whatever, Please go take the time to go look at, I believe, the 2002, uh, yep. if I'm not mistaken, the 2002 Cotton Bowl against LSU. Rollins, I think he had over 200 yards was, receiving in that game. It was, he went it was nuts. 2000. It was 2003. It was, it was the 2003. Year, it was the year oh, okay. before the, uh, yeah. Uh, I was sitting there right on the 50 yard yeah. line and I was just amazed on. He had one of the greatest yeah. catching runs <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> nice. Love it. That's, uh, that's literally my first memory of a UT game. Like, is a, is a baby boy. I remember watching. The Longhorns and LSU Tigers, like the, the uniforms on the field on some sunny day. That's all I remember. <laughs> that was like the first image of Texas football. In my mind. So I got to go back and watch that game in full. Nice. Nice. All right, Madrid, you're up. Second round, who you got? Okay. All right. I feel like the running backs are going to get real thin soon. So um, this one's kind of tough, but I'll take Cedric Benson. Oh, wait. Hang oh, on. It's Sorry. Tran- it's Tran. It's Tran. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh damn! No. Don't worry, I'm not like snagging that. your pick. Uh, no. I, I actually think uh, running my, backs my are hand has been shown extremely, extremely deep. They are. So, um, I am going to stay with my defense. Okay, and Fair get enough. the very first, uh, the second Nagurski winner in Texas history, right behind Derek Johnson, uh, oh, yes. Brian, Brian Arakpo. Oh, so, he's going with okay. all the all those Mac Brown defensive Tw- players. Twenty three sacks. First Hendricks Award winner as well, and the Nagurski as well. You see, guys, this is defensive bias because Tran is a, is a def- it was played corner and safety oh, his whole life. That's I'm, what it was. I'm so a, so that's, that's how his mind is wired. Oh, okay. For those of you who don't understand why he's picking the way he's picking. Okay, you guys are buying those. You, you guys, you guys are uh, you guys are picking <laughs> picking up all the big running backs. I gotta have big guys tackle you guys. It's I'm true. going. To, I'm going holistically as building a team right now. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to win a championship, not just. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you uh, guys win championships. That's right. <laughs> All right, now you can go Madrid. Sorry about that. Okay, well, now it will be Cedric Benson. All <laughs> right, so Doak Walker, uh, oh, a winner, and uh, most carries in school history. The guy's a workhorse. Um, I feel like not even like I knew Cedric Benson went to UT as, as a kid, but like I don't feel like I have no one, I mean, of course, no one's going to talk to him as much, talk about him as much with 
Earl and Ricky there. So, yeah, I think Cedric Benson at this value is uh, really good. Um, so, yeah, you, you I, know, I got the double. Wait, what? I, I agree with you on that. And then not only yeah. that, he also had to face the Vince Young factor, too. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It was like kind of overshadowed the whole time. It was just like a, a constant, constant force there. So, yeah, I feel like he'd be a good addition to the team. All right. For the second one, um, I think we're going to go defense this time. And we're going to go with Michael Huff. Um, oh, the first go. DB. Yeah, the first DB. Um, I was really eyeing him when I was doing the research. I was like, man, third pick, I got to go. I got to go get a DB. Um, I feel like the, I feel like it, it was a coin toss between him and Earl. But just his performance in the in the Rose 05 Rose Bowl defensive M- MVP um, also overshadowed for, by Vince Young's performance and also just being a Thorpe win- a Thorpe Award winner. Yeah, that was that pretty su- uh, summed it up for me. Um, probably probably my favorite uh, in DBU, but Earls are Earls are a close second. I like it. Thank you, Fran. You said that was a uh, you said DB. Was, you did um uh, you took Huff right? Yeah. All right. Well, I am actually taking Earl Thomas. Okay. Um, and the only reason why is like, I, I really do think that he should have been our third Thorpe. Um, I think Eric Berry got it because of his tackles. I think he had about, he had about um, 30 more tackles, but Earl in that same year had eight interceptions, which is oh. unheard of for, a de- for a defensive back. And um, I, I just think, you know, just if you look at his, his line of work from college, the two years that he played, and then the NFL, he was a top 50 player for most of his career. So I just think that he's just a, he's just great on the board for what, what is this third round? Is the third yeah, round? exactly. Mm-hmm. You get a great. Cool. All right. We're doing DB. So we're going with the DB. I'm taking Nathan Basher. Okay, who, nice. Here who comes is, the run. Nate Booty. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's probably the what third best if people debated about it db uh, I, I don't know that's really hard to debate db order in the university of texas but at least statistic wise honestly he's probably one of the best out there i mean he's way he's he's tied for number one <laughs> in interceptions with uh 17 in his career single season he had a seven interception season in 2001 um he's up there in tackles and uh, just an all-around super dominant player, probably. Oh, no, nah, that doesn't make any sense. I was going to say that he's like the DB that ushered in like that DB era for Mac Brown, which is kind of true. But at the same time, DBU was so established well before he got there uh, back in the, yeah, I mean, even like what, 70s, 80s, you know, 90s. Like it, it, it's it's been probably the most heralded position group at the University of Texas, even though. LSU and Ohio State and Florida and others claim to be DBU. We're we're the real DBU. <laughs> everyone everyone else shut up. But uh, yeah, Nathan Vasher is now off the board. Uh, also Mars, an, you're all, up. an all American at in uh, a DB and returner. That's pretty. Mm-hmm. That's pretty wild. I forgot about his returning ability. Yeah, exactly. Nice. All right, so for my third round pick. This has been a tough decision, but I think I'm going to settle and go for uh, Britt Hager. Uh, Damn. I, yeah. You know, I, when Brecken Hager came to Texas, I always heard about Britt Hager, but, you know, he's a Longhorn. Uh, Brecken Hager was a Longhorn legacy. But I didn't realize Britt Hager had literally one tackle shy of 500 tackles at Texas. Like, how is that even possible to get that many <laughs> tackles, at, at, like, in college? That's that's insane. He, I mean, he also went in the third round in the NFL, had a good career in the NFL. And – um. You know, after my nostalgic pick at number one, I'm just trying to get as much production as possible at this point. So, uh, yeah, I'm take Britt Hager. Um, he, but you know, I'm so young, I didn't get to see him play. Wish I did though. But yeah, I'll, I'll take the production, Britt Hager. Yeah, and adding on to that, if you look at the statistics, he is both the number one uh, in terms of single season tackles. He is number one and number two on the list. He had 195 and 88 <sighs> and 187. Yeah. In 87. I mean, holy crap. <laughs> I don't think – is that possible they, in the modern game? No. Yeah, <laughs> no, they don't because run they're, not gonna run, they're, yeah. they're not going to run the ball directly to the linebackers every single time. <laughs> yeah. But that that 
yeah, that's probably a record that'll never be beat. One shy of 500. That's just insane. All right. Steven, you got two picks. Let's do this again, guys. So <laughs> my man, Matt Myers, <laughs> you took the remix, but it's not better than the original. We got to go Tommy Nobis here. Okay. Uh, number 60 is retired for a reason. And not only is number 60 <laughs> retired, but Tran took Derek Johnson. Derek Johnson, his last game, I think his senior game, didn't he wear number 60 to pay tribute? Didn't Breck it, did. uh, Britt Breck Hager? Yeah. You know, all of these guys, they wear number 60 for a reason. Okay. If you go down Tommy Novus's resume, who at the before Earl Campbell, you can make the argument was the greatest Longhorn player. Even all those guys, you know, the 69, 1970 national championship teams. Tommy Novus went on to become a first team all decade 1960s player at, at linebacker. And I get somebody who also played guard on offense back in the day where guys are playing both ways. And I understand, hey, how would he translate to today's game and, and that type of thing? And, you know, I always have – you have to adjust some sort of margin for when you're dealing with all time because he only had access to what he had access to at the time in terms of size and all those type of things. But Tommy Nobis was an absolute dog. I get the ultimate captain for my defense – and number 60, the great, legendary. May he rest in peace, Tommy Nobis. Mm-hmm. Mr. Phelps, Wait, he the game? I'm sorry? I was like, he averaged, I was reading up when I was researching, he averaged like 20 tackles a game. I don't know how true that is, but that's insane. <laughs> right, right. The analytics are a little shaky right? uh, in 19. <laughs> they were just eyeballing right? everything. <laughs> that's 20. That's 20. <laughs> Write it down. He ran up to the pile. That's another tackle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I believe I have the next pick as well, right? Yep. First to the fourth. Um, round. Yeah. So uh, I am. I hate being like the, the old head guy here, <laughs> but I'm actually going to take Jerry Gray at DB. Okay. So yeah. again, we talk about DBU. Jerry Gray, not one but two All-Americans, okay? And somebody took Nathan Basher earlier. I think Jerry Gray has either 16 or 17 career interceptions. Yeah, so they're tied. you're talking about, you're talking about absolute close. ball hawk. For me, um, I'm thrilled to get this pick. I, I would have actually, I would have, my DB I, was, I really wanted was Earl Thomas, to be honest with you, because I know he didn't win the Thorpe. I know, you know, other, but like Aaron Ross won the Thorpe, right? But who's taking Aaron Ross over Earl Thomas. It's like one of those things where it's talent thing. also, it's a talent thing. It's subjective. And so Earl was my dude. However, um, Jerry Gray also, you know, defensive coordinator had, and if, had a very, very good NFL career. Um, and one of the, again, one of the people that is at the forefront of why we, you know, at one point were considered DBU and, and, and could throw that name out there. So I'm thrilled to take two of the older guys represent for the old heads out here. I'm going to take Jerry Gray. Nice. Like it. Good pick. It's funny that I, I'm up, right, Trevor? You are, yes. Okay, it's funny that you mentioned Aaron Ross. Um, I'm actually going to take Aaron Ross here uh, in, in the fourth <laughs> for myself. <laughs> um, because, I mean, Aaron Ross, I think a lot of the reason that he's not as remembered, like as heralded as um, Michael Huff, Earl Thomas, even Michael Griffin. I think Michael Griffin gets more praise uh, when you look back at at you know the 2000s than Aaron Ross did. I think it's because in that Alamo Bowl, I think it was his last game, he got absolutely shredded up. Fresh off a of Thorpe Award, he got shredded up by some big Iowa tight end. I can't remember who it was, but it was crazy. Um, but aside from that, I mean, he was – first of all, he's from San Antonio. Shout out. Um, I know but, that, Dan. But second of all, I mean, he had over 200 tackles, um, Thorpe Award. Um, he won a national championship at Texas. He had a, a pretty good NFL career. And, I mean – He's just one of the flagship, you know, like the flagships of DBU. That it's Texas. I mean, I'm not going to let this guy with the Thorpe Award sit on the in, in the green room any longer. I got to take Aaron Ross right here. Sounds and he like married he, one of the great yeah. Olympians. Yeah, it, uh, it <laughs> sounds to me like you're trying to recruit his son <laughs> already. <laughs> Getting those Get genetics in, in my program. <laughs> I like it. 
All right. Fourth round pick for myself. Who am I going to take? We're going to stick defense here. I think that's a trend we're all following, and I'm going with probably mm, – it's debatable, but he's up there. One of the greatest defensive ends of all time for Texas, Steve McMichael, who is up there on the board. I mean, he's way up there in tackles. He's way up. I mean, he's up there in sacks. Um, it's hard to it's hard to find a defensive end that like both generates not just sacks and not just like quarterback hurries, but tackles too. And McMichael did it, and obviously had a you know decent NFL career with the bears back when they were in their heyday. Um, Just a super talented player. Um, He's him and another guy who is probably about to be drafted here soon are are probably the first you think of in terms of defensive ends. Well, and Arakbo, but um, uh, at least the classic university of Texas players, he's up there. So uh, yeah, filling out my defensive side of the ball with uh, McMichael. I like it. Oh, it was on the 85 Bears defense too, right? Isn't yeah, that yeah, that's right? what I was saying with the defense. Uh, no, it's nice, nice, my bad, I missed that. No, it's all right. Good pick. Tran. <sighs> so I'm going to go quarterback with this one. I'm just trying to think if uh, I actually have him ranked number three, but I but I think I'm going to go with my fourth one. I think I'm going to go with Chris Sims, and I honestly think that he's our what? best uh, pro quarterback that we've had. Pro, pro, pro QB prospect that we've had. Well, if he didn't get long. injured in the N- NFL with a, what is a ruptured spleen? A lacerated spleen. Yeah. yeah. He was, he was starting in the NFL. He how was. many, how many quarterbacks have started in the NFL aside from Vince Young? Uh, he got hoes. So uh, I'm going with Chris Sims. I mean, like, like Steven eloquently said, it's a drop off after you know Vince Young and Colt McCoy, but I don't think that's it's a far drop off from Colt McCoy and Chris Sims, other than this, this statistics portion. So, so Tran, this is going to be the part of the video where people's heads explode. Yeah, and I don't say, care. including mine. Say, <laughs> I don't, and say, I don't say, care. And say, and say, I have major, major, him, him. And say major Appleway, right? However, mm-hmm. I uh. Agree with oh. you, Jonathan. Uh, well, we Trent. also know I agree inside with you. stuff. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, yes. Correct. About how that situation went yes. down at Texas. I believe that Mac Brown did the right thing. And this is this is not a popular opinion, especially amongst mm-hmm. Texas fans. But me personally, I believe Mac Brown did the right thing because the same people right now saying Hudson Card over Casey Thompson OG. is why. Because they believe Hudson Card has natural talent, natural gifts. If we get Arch Manning or we get Quinn Ewers, people are going to want that person to start. Why? Because of the arm talent, because of what they have potentially to, to, to give and do. Chris Sims, I believe, was uh, 26 and 6 as a starter at Texas mm-hmm. versus Major mm-hmm. Applewhite was 22 and 8. And Major Applewhite had the luxury of playing with Ricky Williams his freshman year. Now, Major Applewhite did win a Big 12 player, uh, Offensive Player of the Year. Right. So there's they're close. They're they're like neck and neck statistically. But the number one thing people will point to is the Big 12 championship game against Colorado. Yeah. And the holiday bowl uh, uh, against uh, uh, that we went was I think it was Oregon where, where, where they went, switched where, out, where they switched where they, out, to Apple. where yes. they started him. Right. But what people have to understand is going into the 2001 season, Chris Sims beat out major Apple White outright. Mm-hmm. Chris Sims started the entire season. So the the argument to say. Well, Major Applewhite should have started against that Colorado Big 12 championship game. Does not make sense? Because Chris Sims had four touchdowns and no picks like two weeks before against Colorado. And again, had started that entire season. And so Major Applewhite was the perfect, in my opinion, this is strictly my opinion, but he was the perfect quarterback to come off the bench because of his temperament. He was always prepared, which is why he's a coach now. But he was a different type of player when there were expectations on the board. Major Applewhite was also the starting quarterback when we went against Stanford and Texas ranked fifth and and we got our ass whooped. And he was the quarterback there and Chris Sims had to replace him. But we don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. He was also the quarterback against Oklahoma. Major Applewhite was the starting quarterback against Oklahoma when they scored like 60 something on us. Now, Chris Sims did come in and throw a pick six, Mm -hmm. but people love to go straight to his pick six. Before yeah. they go to Major Applewhite getting pulled because of how the story ended, right? Mm-hmm. With Major Applewhite. So 
I'm with you, but if you're going to make the argument for some of these guys on the arm talent type thing, there's a reason why Major Applewhite wasn't even drafted and Chris Sims was a third round pick. That's so true. That's my case, and I'm I'm backing up. I'm with you, Tran. No, you, you just sold me. Honestly. <laughs> I know. Well, growing up, everyone always talked about Major over Chris Sims, but I, I guess I never had the like historical context with like the OG uh, QB controversy, you know. So that makes a lot of sense, honestly. Absolutely. There's other one other thing we need to add with Chris Sims, and he is one of the most important recruits yes. in all of Texas football history. People have to remember. Chris Sims was the number one One overall overall football player in 1999 coming out of high school. Number one overall. And he was supposed to go to Tennessee. And, Uh and, you know, say what you want. Mac Mac won the deal, right? Corey Redding was in that same – I believe in that same class. Him and Corey Redding changed the course of Texas football history because they go on to sign Chance Mock, who was Mm -hmm. like the number two or three five-star recruit out of, out of the woodlands and the very next year they signed another number one overall player and vince young that that momentum getting chris sims led to roy williams sloan thomas bj johnson all these guys wanted to play with chris so you can't you won't end up with some of those people if you don't get if the he's chris not sims here thing. yep and the coaches realize that behind the scenes but fans again us as fans and what the end result was on the field it was disappointing the outcome but the end result wasn't terrible. It was six losses. <laughs> what we would terrible. do for a 26 and six quarter. Yes. Today. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this one was going to actually start a conversation. Actually, that big. Oh, I can't wait to see the comments on y'all's yeah. video. Uh, right. and, 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 and again, we're in the mi- we're, we're in the minority with our opinion, but I'm, 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 I've said too much. Go ahead. <laughs> nice. Who's up? <laughs> I, I think it's me. Eh? Yeah, yeah, Madrid, okay, I think okay. it's you. <laughs> Man. Fourth fourth round. I feel like I need more defense. You got back to back picks. Okay. Um well my linebackers are getting kind of short for me. So uh I just want to clarify this. Is is Kiki Deala? He's the linebacker, yeah, right? That's who I wanted. Right? Okay, I'm just making <laughs> sure. All time sack leader, single season sack yeah. leader. Um his pictures, he just looks like a he looks like a menace. He just looks scary. I wish I could have seen that guy. So yeah, uh, I'll take I'll take him uh, as as my linebacker. And then see, so let me look at my team real quick. Hold on, got to strategize, strategize. Okay, okay, okay. It's pretty good team. I know, I mean, man. They're all pretty good teams. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just gonna go with a guy I've been eyeing for a long time, and that's Eric Metcalf. Uh, I, I, want to, I, want to, I want him at my flex. I want him at my flex. Uh, yeah. Um, he's like, he's like the, he was kind of ahead of his time. He had like, I, let me see. I think I wrote it down real quick. Um, fifty six hundred all purpose yeah. yards. Oh yeah, he was air, air, and and on the ground. Like, uh, it, I, I, it was crazy when I was researching him. Like some some sites. Or some opinions had him as a running back. Some people had him as as a wide receiver. So I feel like that's a true flex right there. So yeah, Eric Metcalf. Yep. Well, you made my flex easy. I'm uh, selecting Rom- Romance Taylor. Nice. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why? <laughs> he Whoa. is a he is a special special player. When he had the ball in his hands, it was like he was on he he was unstoppable. He, at one point, he was even starting over. Uh, 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 Jamal Charles. That's how good he was. Wow. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can run the ball. He 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 uh, re- he fielded kickoffs. You know he he was he was a touchdown waiting to happen. I think they even de- uh, they described him in the Rose Bowl game as the poor man's Reggie Bush. Wow. Quote unquote. Mm. Yeah, I remember the year after the national championship, like he was going to be the guy for us, you know, and it was mm-hmm. cool. It was going to be Ramon Taylor's team. And then um, I'm not really – I don't really remember what happened, but he wasn't on the team that year. He was gone from Texas. But, yeah, it's just kind of like what could have been. I remember watching him in 2005, Oklahoma State. I mean, against USC, he had that huge touchdown run. He was just like dynamite in a bottle. So, yeah, I, I mean, the potential for Ramon Taylor is astronomical, but he never really lived up to it. But I like that pick. We're we're not talking we're not talking about uh his his bad portion. I'm talking about his good portion right now. That's I want him at his best. 
so it, we can make an upside picks out here. I know. I am. Um, I don't. I don't know about that. Wait, wait. Who ended up being the running back that year? Was it? It ultimately finished out being Selvin Young and, and Jamal yep. Charles. And Jamal Charles. And Charles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I thought. But everybody was getting off. Go back and look at the uh, kick return against Ohio State where he dropped the ball in the end zone and picked that thing <laughs> and up. And he picked it up and, and ran. The acceleration. Yes. yes. <laughs> He's, wow, okay. He was, he was, was special. He was a special player. Hmm. Hey, Tran, I love you. That was a reach, bro. I know. Hey, whatever. <laughs> you know, was, he's, was, you know uh, he's a special player, though. I, I love him. Yeah. I love him. Shout out to the brother. I'm he's glad he's, he's got my flex. Right. He's but my I flex. Need people, I need people to be available. Tran, he might not make it to the game, brother. Yeah, he's going to make it there. No. <laughs> he, gets, he gets the second shot. Weren't they the national champions for, uh, like, the flag football league or something like that? The NFL flag football yeah. league? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you guys Tran's like Tran. Some All right. hot take picks, man. But that leaves me wide Scorching. open to take this this other running back that you were mentioning for my flex. Uh, I'm taking Jamal <laughs> as my flex. Absolute stud of a running back. Um, yeah, way up there in terms of yards all time for University of Texas. He's up there with rushing touchdowns. Um, had a very good career at the University of Texas. Went on to play with the Chiefs and do very well. Unfortunately, just missed the Patrick Mahomes era, um, but just an absolute stud of a running back. And uh, I feel very fortunate to have stolen him from you. But Tran, you you like Romance Taylor better. So. I, will, I will take Romance. He was starting <laughs> over him. Romance. I like it. All right. Myers, you're up. All right, this is a tough decision. I was actually I was I need a defensive lineman here, and I was thinking, you know what, Roderick Wright would make sense here. I mean, he's really decorated, Longhorn great on the 05 championship team, but I can't let Corey Redding just sit there. I yeah. mean, Corey Redding, you know, he's one of the greatest Longhorns of all time, and like you said, Stephen, he was instrumental in really just getting the that Mac Brown recruiting level, you know, to that next championship level, which ultimately ultimately went to 2005. And, you know, culminated in a national championship. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he had like t- over 20 sacks, over 200 tackles at Texas, had a super long NFL career. And, um, yeah, just another guy that I wish I could have been young enough, I mean, old enough to really appreciate. So, yeah, I'll take Corey Redding here because I, I was noticing the defensive line historically at Texas has been really, you know, lacking. We need to definitely produce some more NFL talent here and, um, you know, just high caliber guys, at the defensive line. So hopefully guys like Alfred Collins, Vernon Broughton, Tavondre Sweat, uh, Jatavian Sanders can, you know, start making that next, next step for us, you know, as a defensive lineman. But yeah, I'll take Corey Redding here. Good pick that, uh, that, that pick six he had against North Carolina where he does the, uh, <laughs> the flip into the end yeah. zone over, over yes. a dude. Um, I love Corey Redding. Love him, love him, love him. Very, very important. Like, like you said, very important player in the history. I, am I? Am I next? Yep, you got yeah, you two got picks, double. buddy. All right, so I'm gonna finish out the defense. I gotta go, Kenneth Sims, uh, who was the number one overall pick, number one overall pick in 1982 NFL oh. draft, as well as a. I get, I get another person. So all my, my entire defense is multi-year, consists of all Americans. <laughs> That's true. I mean, what, and, and I, I, I'm taking a guy. I'm taking a guy. Since Tran loves defense so much, I'm taking the dude that got drafted before Lawrence Taylor. Ooh. Now it didn't. End, it didn't. End, <laughs> you know, that's a mistake. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Uh, you know, New England Patriots got to talk about that, but he did play in the Super Bowl. Um, somebody mentioned Steve McMichael being on the Bears in 1985. Kenneth Sims actually played on the Patriots Super Bowl team, and you know, setting the line of scrimmage. And it's tough because there's so many people on the board from a defensive line perspective that I really want. But I can't let Kenneth Sims fall uh, past this point with how decorated he is. I love how decorated my entire defense is. All old head defense over here. Steve, from that perspective, baby. Um, now, for this pick, I'm debating on on how I want to fill either of these, these spots. Um, I'm actually going to go flex. I'm going to go Deonta Foreman. Smart. Um, And take. I know Matt was. Matt doesn't have a running back. I know it. I knew it. (laughs) Which is which is which is strategy here, right? Because I see he's blank on a running back. So 
there's some there's there's still we're deep at that position, but and, and there's an argument that could be made for Chris Gilbert, who I believe was the first uh, running back in NCAA history who had three consecutive thousand yard seasons, and I believe he was a national champion. But I want to take somebody who I really enjoy watching. I want to take somebody who was super productive. I know he didn't win anything here at Texas, but it was not his fault. Um, the Doke. And no, did he? I mean, I mean, he won individual. I'm talking about games. Um, no, with Charlie. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, he we didn't, didn't have anything. the greatest offensive line, and no, we didn't have the greatest offensive line in the world either, mm-hmm. with what he did. Um, and the brother was consistent. Actually, starting from the year before, you know, even when he was splitting with Jonathan Gray. And the streak that he carried of a hundred yard games was mm-hmm. insane. He even broke split the record. Time, he broke the record, even split in time early that year with Chris Warren. So, oh, wow. Uh, Deontay Foreman, I wanted Eric Metcalf here, just being blunt, because I also needed the kick returner aspect mm-hmm. with Metcalf. And I'm pissed that Madrid took him. <laughs> but I got a wonderful consolation prize in Deontay Foreman, and I'm happy about that pick. You did. All right, Myers, you're back. All right, so Deontay Foreman being off the board really hurts my plan. So I'm going to go with kind of a panic pick here, but also not a panic pick. This may be like a home run pick, honestly. And he's really the only player that's actively at Texas right now worth consideration of being drafted. And um, yeah, no so way. Yes, you know, I mean, I have no it. other options. I'm not taking. I'm not taking Chris Gilbert. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm taking. I'm taking B. John Robinson. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't argue with 8.2 yards per carry with <laughs> our O-line last year. Like, we didn't have a great O-line at all. We had an average at best O-line. And, I mean, it's so obvious that Bijan is gifted. I, like, barring injury or anything like that, he's going to have an amazing career at Texas. And I think he could potentially be that third Heisman Trophy winner that we've been waiting for. Um, but then again, it's hard as a running back to win Heisman's now. But still, bijan has got – he's got that magic factor. He's – He's just um, – he's built like an NFL player, and he just got an insane motor, insane quickness. And um, he's just next in line for Texas to be one of those great running backs we have. And hopefully, you know, continue that tradition of our running back university because, I mean, we're kind of in the mix right there. We have a lot of doke, uh, dokes, and then we have two Heismans at running back. So if we get Bijan to hit, maybe win a doke, maybe win a Heisman, boom, we are right there, top of the mountain of RBU as well as DBU. So, yeah, Bijan Robinson – um, I don't want to overhype him though, uh, so I ex- I expect to be let down. No, no, no! You convinced me, bro. In a oh, year, no. in a year, in a year, you, you might be, you might be, we might be saying this was a steal. We could. This this might age very well. Hopefully, for our sake, this yes, needs please. to age well. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, my pick now. Who am I taking? I, I'm the last one to get a quarterback off the board. So I'm taking this player that I would have thought would have been taken already. Um, Major Applewhite. He is way up there on the stats again. I'm hammering those stat sheets. Uh, Third all-time in passing yards. Single season, he's way up there too. Fourth all-time for a single season in 1999. And that's with, you know, splitting time with Chris Sims. So imagine what he could have done alone. And then uh, passing touchdowns, he's third all-time. really kind of a steal for a fifth round pick. I think um, not the, I mean, I really wanted Colt McCoy because his stats are outrageous and he'd be a fantasy goat in my opinion. So congrats to whoever took him. but uh, Apple white, I will take with uh with a smile. <laughs> nice. All right. Trim, uh, uh, cue up the part of the video where people get mad that James street was not selected. Please. Yeah, no, I had, that was my number three actually. And they're gonna, gonna they're gonna blame Tram. Yeah. They're gonna blame yeah. Tram for taking Chris Sims. <laughs> That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> I don't want smoke. all the smoke. We didn't draft a, a quarterback who had so, a perfect career. What about James Brown? So James uh, Brown too. Hmm. He was so uh, what do I have left? Do I have a running back and wide receiver? That is you have correct. Receiver yeah. and a flex. Yeah. Oh no, Romans was my flex. Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah. So running back and, re- and receiver. Okay. okay, so I am going to go with uh, wide receiver uh, Mike Adams. I like that. All right. Because Perfect. he had 3,000 receiving yards 
And also he returned punts. I think he had two touchdowns for punt returns. So I'm going to keep him. Good stuff. Madrid, you're up. Okay, so I need a receiver and a line, a D, D, a D lineman. Okay. Okay, core rating's gone. It comes down to two guys for defensive line. Um, this is tough. I kind of have guys equally ranked, um, but I like Casey Hampton here. Um, just a beast of a nose tackle, really. Mm-hmm. And then it's Great more, pick. you know, I, I know him more from his Pittsburgh days where he just anchored that defense, like just crazy picks, Pittsburgh defense. But like from what I was seeing and researching, like this guy was a menace and, and I was so, so big and explosive. So yeah, Casey Thompson, uh, Casey Thompson, <laughs> Casey Hampton, are you? <laughs> Casey Thompson. Right. Yeah, um, Kiki and Mike Huff on your defense will eat because you have the ultimate insurance. You know, you have the, the 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 bodyguard in front of him, and he was actually a very very good athlete in my opinion when he was at Texas as well for his size. So that's a fantastic pick. Thank you, thank you. And then to close it off on my team, man, this one's kind of tough. Um. I'll take uh, Quan Cosby here. Um, just the nice. the the one B to the one A Jordan Shipley. Um, just a nice, just a nice combo they had going on there, and you, you just can't go wrong. He's up there, man. In terms of mm-hmm. Texas wide receivers, like all the yeah, all the like he's he's up surprised there. he hasn't been picked yet, yeah. honestly. So my final pick for running back. This is uh this is for Ingotti. This is for a boy, uh, Pat Frierson, uh, Priest Holmes. Oh, yep, Holmes. that's his dude. Um, he not necessarily for his college career because he got injured during his college career, but more so his NFL career. I mean, some some of the records that he holds in the NFL are pretty, or or all the statistics that he has up there. At one point, he he broke Marshall Fox touchdown record. <laughs> Uh, he was tied with, he was tied with Emmett Smith for the only two running backs to have back to back, uh, 20 or more rushing seasons at, at one point. So, you know, I'm, I'm going with him just because of just of how he handled himself in the NFL for 11 years as a running back. Sheesh. Yeah. He, he was, he was legit. And he's a San Antonio guy too. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right. I got to pick a linebacker here. Uh, the four greats have come off the board, so now it's kind of a, a picking to pick. And um, I'm actually taking our second leading tackler of all time in Doug Schenkel, who uh, has 478 career tackles. Um, also played in that you know early 80s era, uh, back when the linebacker position was a lot more prominent than it is now. Um, he's also pretty high up there in terms of single season tackles. Um, I believe he's kind of up there in terms of sacks as well. Um, so a name that probably not a ton of people know, but nonetheless, I mean, to be number two overall in career tackles at the university of Texas is something that's no small task, you know? So Doug Shankle, you're off the board. Linebackers are closed. Okay. Trevor, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are we considering Joseph Osai a linebacker? Or are we considering him defensive line? Probably defensive line. But well, linebacker. Myers. Linebacker. I was I had him in my I had him on my linebacker board. I say linebacker. Can I he played linebacker majority of, of his career, no? Yeah. Right. I should take right, him right. And he was, he was more like of a, edge, he was right? a hybrid. Yeah, yeah. You know, the jack position, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically, it's a linebacker, even though he kind of had his hand in the dirt. Yeah, exactly. Blah, blah, blah. But he, I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious because I know the, the struggles with the Todd Orlando stuff were there before, but like, I was just curious how y'all had your boards with, with Osai. Cause yeah. I think I agree with y'all about the linebackers being thin. So I was going to cheat and like go Osai if I ended up in that situation. So I was just curious how everybody else was thinking. No, yeah. I was Back to the show. yeah. No, I mean that's definitely a good point. I'm I'm gonna stick with Doug though, just because of the 
I mean, the production. second all time. Yeah, the production is just too good to pass up. And uh, Osai, maybe if he stayed one more year, I think he could have been a, a great. Uh, I think he made the right choice, though. But yeah. Myers, <laughs> it's you, buddy. All right. So my last pick, I also was hunting down Eric Metcalf, but Madrid got him really early for my flex spot. So. I'm going to pivot to another guy that's kind of I, – I think of similar in, in a similar way is Kwame Cavill. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. He had 174 receptions at Texas. Yeah. He actually had a 100-reception season at Texas, which um, I don't think anybody ever replicated that before. So Devin Duvernay. Yeah. Kwame Cavill, I mean, whenever I'm watching old Longhorn Network games like against UCLA and stuff like that, he's just – Always seems to be making plays. So, call me Cavill. Steven, there's only Very, one correct pick here. Hey, I'm going Devin DuVernay. What? I'm going Devin DuVernay. Not here's Limus? Why. Here's why. Here's why. Devin DuVernay, I'm not going Limus Sweet. Here's why. No. no. <laughs> Devin DuVernay, Devin <laughs> DuVernay was not used properly at Texas the nope. first three years. <laughs> exactly. And the moment, the moment that he was actually used correctly, he was one of the top three receivers in the, in, in, in college football. When you talk about the reliability, Lyman Sweet did drop some passes, and I did see Lyman Sweet get taken away in certain games. Even though he was awesome in the, the Ohio State game, Vince Young, and you think about the national championship game and, and how clutch he was as a possession wide receiver, I get the top off the defense guy. Think about Devin DuVernay as the Jordan Shipley to Colt McCoy, because that's how I'm building my team. And in terms of what Colt McCoy is good at, short to intermediate, I get that with Devin DuVernay plus, because I love Sam Ellinger. Plus. But I get plus with Colt McCoy in that that matchup, because I'm getting a, a souped-up Quan Cosby, a souped-up Jordan Shipley, who's actually being used properly. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and, and potentially somebody, I mean, we just saw Devin DuVernay run a kickoff back for the touchdown uh, for, for the Ravens. So I also can use him as a kick returner, even though I thought he wasn't that good of a kick returner at Texas. I found out that was a Texas problem, not a, not a Devin DuVernay problem. <laughs> so to, to, to go back to what I was talking about, versions of people's careers, Devin DuVernay, I mean, think about if our brows wasn't our brows and right. all that stuff <laughs> off the gun. He had stayed at mm. Baylor. He would have done what Corey Coleman and Kendall Wright and all those dudes oh, would yeah. have done. So that's that's why I'm going with Devin DuVernay. I feel bad about Linus. I, I love Linus Sweet, but Linus was was the poor man's Roy in a lot of ways. So I got to go Devin DuVernay for me. I like it. Yeah, that's I agree bold. with you. I mean, 20, 2,500 yards compared to 1,900 yards. Devin DuVernay didn't really have no three years. Yeah, for three years, didn't really have any reliable the ball. Yeah, he's just fantastic. I like it. Well, cool. Well, that closes the draft. Our teams are done. Uh, let's go ahead and review them then. Uh, Scared so, of Trevor's offense, honestly. Yeah, so Madrid with uh, – I'm just going to read them all off for everyone just so they have an understanding. So Madrid's team, he has Vince Young as his quarterback. Running back, he's got Cedric Benson. Wide receiver, Quan Cosby. Flex, Eric Metcalf, defensive line, Casey Hampton, linebacker, Kiki De, 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 De Ayala, uh, something like that. <laughs> I can never say De his Ayala. name. De Ayala. Uh, and then defensive back and Michael Huff. All right. And then Tran, he's got Chris Sims at quarterback, Priest Holmes running back, Mike Adams receiver, Ramont Taylor at flex. You got Brian Arakbo on the defense, Derek Johnson, linebacker, Earl Thomas, DB. Myself, I got Major Applewhite, quarterback, Ricky Williams, running back, Roy Williams, wide receiver, Jamal Charles at flex, Steve McMichael at linebacker, I mean defensive line, linebacker, Doug Shankle, defensive back, Nathan Vasher, Myers has Sam Ellinger at quarterback, B. John Robinson, running back, wide receiver, Jordan Shipley, uh, Kwame Cavell at flex, he has Corey Redding at defensive line, Britt Hager at linebacker, and Aaron Ross at defensive back. And then Steven, <laughs> who might – honestly, your team is pretty stacked, Steven. You got Colt it's McCoy at running back, 
uh, I mean, Colt McCoy at quarterback, Earl Thomas running back, Devin Duvernay receiver, flex Deontay Foreman, defensive line Kenneth Sims, linebacker Tommy Nobis, and defensive back Jerry Gray. So he's got the best team. <laughs> you know, Steven has, has some really all-around all, all talent, but yes. I think Trevor has the best offense and then Tran, Tran has the best defense. You think Tran has the best defense? I don't know if, you, if we're talking. My, okay, mine, I think mine are the new. My, mine are the new age guys, the guys that actually have been timed and face against <laughs> face against yeah, other right. beast of athletes. This correct stats. I, I, I mean, you can't you can't you, you can't knock Tommy Novus or anything like that, you know. But about being born in a certain era. But the thing, the fact of the matter is, I bet you if he played here, he's not he's not the force that oh, here he was go. back then. I'm just here saying. Go. I'm just oh, saying. No. made a lot more people mad right now. I don't All right. care. <laughs> All right. Your defense, without a doubt, without a doubt, your defense is built to stop today's – I mean, Derek Johnson is the perfect spread linebacker. He is. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Derek Johnson actually fits better today than he did when he came out in the draft in like 05. Because remember, the knock on him was he's not the big run thumping linebacker. And then the game mm-hmm. shifted to everything he was good at anyway, which is mm-hmm. why his NFL career was so long. So your defense, Earl Thomas, your defense is built for for today, no doubt about it. I just got all these All Americans that are just <laughs> super productive and got statues. That's all I'm saying. That's true. That's saying. So you, you're you're telling me if Derek Johnson was replaced back in the day, he wouldn't be he wouldn't have a statue? Come on, man. I mean that. I mean, let, it's a different. It's a different. I know. Generation. I know that. But yeah, that's that. I that's mean, like it's saying if argument. I put LeBron in the sixties, <laughs> you know, like he'd I average eight hundred seventy-two points a game. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so what I'm saying. Draft. It's like nobody from from back in the day. No, no. I mean, you 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 definitely drafted this. This was specifically made for Texas players of mm. today, and you know, obviously we have we have a. Uh, where is it, Bijan? Someone drafted Bijan. Oh, yeah, Myers, Myers drafted Bijan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Past, so, present, future. Yeah, past, present, future. And you're, you're Myers right. made an investment pick. I love that pick. Yeah. He's like, I, I, I'm making this pick in good faith yeah. that we I come back in 2023. <laughs> I agree with him. I actually had him on my bo- big board. <laughs> like so. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, I, I think I think my defense is is stout. I love I love my defense. I mean, we have good defensive players here in Texas. We're lucky. That's true. We do. Absolutely. So, Steven and Tran have the best defenses. Who's got the best offenses? This is a lot tighter, I think. Never stop tooting your own horn. Although, <laughs> no, no, besides me. <laughs> um, I, I like, go I like Madrid. Madrid. I'm going to go with yeah. Madrid because said Benson is – is way underrated as a running back because people you know people hate yeah. on hated on him because he he said you know I want the individual award yeah right you know, they 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 hated on him for that and he they also he got outshined by Vince Young unfortunately um, Quan Cosby was Mister Reliable and uh, Eric Metcalf is just a beast all all around yeah that's a show I, I, I like in my I like opinion him. you have you have the best player yeah Vince. Talking about being the best player. No, that matters. All right. Well, any final thoughts before we wrap up this video? I had a blast. That's my final yes. thought. This yeah. is a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I like we these a lot. Do, yeah, this was so much fun. Definitely, definitely. Uh, be sure to let us know in the comments your thoughts about this uh, this format. Uh, and uh this idea maybe we'll maybe we'll do more collabs with you guys we'll we'll see we'll see how how this video does and go from there but um as always a lot of fun uh myers Madrid, anything before we sign off uh, i hope uh well, uh i think maybe starting next year uh what like just we should do like more fantasy drafts maybe like me and me and myers in the past uh, did like the all big 12 i yeah. think that's like really interesting just because like how it, how much it changes year to year, like the players, and look, we have like Zach Evans and in, in the Big Twelve now. So like, who knows what, how that's gonna uh, plan out? But yeah, more of these. Myers, you got anything? Not much. My internet's spotty, but I, I appreciate y'all for coming on, and it was awesome. We gotta definitely thanks, guys. More of these, and y'all go s- definitely subscribe to Fanatic Perspective. They're the OGs, best in the business, and I need them to put more content out. They've been slacking. I need some more. 
<laughs> I know we have. Thank you guys. Thank yeah, thanks you. Thanks for Thank having you. us. This was a lot thanks of fun. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, y'all heard it here. Everyone go subscribe to our channel as well as Fanatic Perspective. They're one of the best out there. Um, comment below. Give us a like. All that good stuff. Let's make this an interactive video and let us know if you want to see more of this type, type of content. It is the off season, so we got to get a little creative and uh, hopefully y'all enjoy this one. So with all that here, everyone, horns up. We'll catch you in the next one.